You know, existing restaurants are tough. You know, this old saying, you know, you, you can't keep planting trees where water, I mean, you can't keep planting trees where they keep dying. Uh, there must be something wrong there. I don't know if I agree with that philosophy a whole, you know, 100%, but, um, you know, there's something with location. Um, there's certainly something to do with food, um, quality, and service. You know, our, our number one focus is service, and we, we try to take care of our customers. So, you know, I, it, you know, I have people approach me a lot about buying uh, restaurants or creating restaurants. Previous owners, there's three of them. One of them was kind of an absentee at that point. Um, our chef, Herb Miller, who's still with us, was part of the ownership group. And then uh, Barry Miller, who was the general, uh, uh, Barry Phillips, excuse me, who was the general manager. But there is some personality differences as we came in. And, and like I said, we had to let some of their key people uh, that weren't fitting into our philosophy and uh, they moved on. So there is there is a little of that uh, as you get involved. And, and again, there's no secret formula in the um, restaurant business in my mind financially. I mean, it's a, there's a pie and you know, you gotta get, as I said earlier, your, your food cost and your labor cost and then your, your other third of that pie, which is, uh, and I try to keep them all around 30%, food cost to be a little higher. Uh, the other 30% being your occupancy cost and electricity and uh, insurance and all that. And then hopefully you got 10% left over. And you know, that formula goes up and down depending on what type of restaurant and how high end you are. But um, you know, if you can make that formula work and get the people in the door, then you ought to be able to make some money. Fortunately, you know, we had money that we, we took from the Merrill Land Company side. So we didn't have to go out and bank um, properties or bank money to put into it because that's a tough thing to do. You know, you're, it's one thing borrowing money from a, for a building or housing or developments that we do because you do have, um, you know, you have some assets there if something goes wrong. When you borrow money for a restaurant, especially for a business, if it goes wrong, there's just nothing there, um, you know. Or capital infusion and and that's what you need you, you know just because you open your doors you can spend millions of dollars getting your doors open and have the freezer stocked um, and the refrigerator's full and um, all the fresh fish coming in and you're opening your doors and it's going to take you months and years in our case to get the cash flow to where you can pay for all that and just because you've got the infrastructure there doesn't mean you still don't need a lot of cash one thing, when we first started uh, the restaurant at Fish House, we did not own that building. Um, and there were other tenants in that building as well. I probably would have bought that a little quicker than being a tenant. Uh, where we are now in Jackson, we're actually a tenant. We're in the process of trying to buy that space from the owners as well. Um, they've been a little reluctant on that, but we do have in our agreement, what, one thing I put in there was after five years, they wouldn't sell it originally. and I that for us to take this over at this point after five years um, that we have the option to buy that. And we've got a, a price in there that can be worked out between two appraisals and averaging them. So we're in the process of doing that now and I wish we could have bought that um, sooner. Um, you know it's hard to go out and buy a building when you first start if you're not sure what your success is going to look like. Um, and so now that I've seen what the fish house is it's easy to say I wish I bought it earlier but we did end up buying that and hopefully we'll close on Jackson's here relatively quickly.